Be sure to check out my new gaming channel, Forever 8-Bit. It's linked for you in the video description in the pinned comment. Don't get me wrong, the NES Classic is great right out of the box, and the included 30 games are a lot of fun to play. But we can do better. We're going to transform your NES Classic through the power of Hackchi. You're about to learn how to load hundreds of extra games directly to the internal storage on your NES Classic. And be sure to stay to the end for an important bonus section. Then you'll really be playing with power. To get started, you'll need to download the latest version of Hackchi. It's hosted on the GitHub and linked in the video description. Scroll down on that page until you reach the Assets section. Locate the latest version of the executable installer file here and click to download it to your computer. From your Downloads folder, double-click the Hackchi installer file. Then at the UAC prompt, click on Yes to continue. When the installer appears, you can go through the default options for the installer. Once the installation is complete, click the Close button in the bottom right corner. Now you can delete the installer file from your Downloads folder in order to eliminate clutter. The Hackchi installer copied the program icon into your Start menu in Windows. Locate the app icon for Hackchi and double-click on it to launch it for the first time. You'll get a welcome message with some basic instructions for how to use the program. Click on OK to continue. And if you're prompted, allow access to Hackchi through the firewall. It's perfectly safe. This next notification is super important. Whatever USB cable you're going to use to connect your NES Mini to your computer must be a data cable. It cannot be a charge-only cable or it won't work. If you need one of these, I have one link for you in the video description. Alright, with the prerequisites out of the way, navigate up to the top left corner and click the drop down. Make sure you've selected the correct console and region for the mini system that you want to mod, in this case the NES Classic. You'll see the list of pre-installed games that match the console shown on the left. To start the modding process on your NES Classic, navigate up to the kernel tab and click on it. In the drop down, look for the listing that says install slash repair and click on it. Then at the confirmation prompt that appears on screen, click on yes to continue. The custom software, or kernel, is downloaded directly to your PC first. You'll see an on-screen message that your mini system is ready for programming. You'll need to place it in what's called FEL mode. It's a Linux command that enables USB programming. Here's how that's done. With your NES Classic unplugged, press the power button. Then press and hold the reset button and flip the console around. While still holding the reset button, plug in power to the system. Continue holding that reset button for about 5 seconds. Once FEL mode is active, Windows will play the USB connection chime. Then the custom software, or the new kernel, will be transferred to your device. The installation takes several minutes and your NES Classic will restart several times during the process. You'll get an on-screen notification that the kernel has been installed successfully. Click the OK button to continue. If you plug in your NES Classic right now, you'll see that Hackchi has been loaded successfully. Problem is, there's no new content on here. Let's fix that. Any NES games you want to install directly onto the NES Classic need to be in .NES format. Take a look here. I have four different game ROMs already pre-staged in .NES format. To stage the game ROMs you want to copy over to your NES Classic, simply drag and highlight over all of them. Then drag and drop them directly onto the games list inside the Hackchi application for Windows. This can take from seconds to minutes depending upon the number of games. Now that the games are copied over, I'm going to move the File Explorer window out of the way. The games that you've staged for copy over will be listed at the top of the left window pane. What's really great too is the program goes online and scrapes not only the box art, but the metadata for the games. Nice! You can only show 30 games at a time at the top level navigation of the NES Classic, so you'll want to set up a new type of structure. Click the button labeled Structure shown here. From the list of drop-down choices, choose the second one. It says Custom Use Folders Manager. While you're up there, repeat that exact same process. Click Structure, and then pick Custom Use Folders Manager once again. You'll see a new window open up that gives you access to create custom folders inside your NES Classics main menu. I recommend that you automatically sort these by the first letter of each game. Here's how you do that. In the right window pane, there's a listing that says Split by First Letter. Click that option. You'll find that new folders have been created in alphabetical order. All of the games currently or scheduled to be installed on your NES Classic will be alphabetized by first letter in those folders. With the folder structure now established, come down to the bottom and click on the OK button to close out the folder manager. And conveniently enough, you'll be hovering right over the button called Synchronize Selected Games with MIDI. Click this button, and at the confirmation prompt, click Yes. Rather than FEL mode, this time you'll get instructions to connect your NES Classic by USB to your computer and then power on the Classic. Once you do, you'll see the folder manager pop up again. You can simply close it out. 
Then you'll see that your content, including the folder structure, is being copied over to your NES Classic. Once the process is complete, you'll receive a confirmation message on screen. Navigate to the OK button and click on it to close this confirmation message. Let's hook up the NES Classic to a TV and make sure everything went to plan. Once your NES Classic is powered on, you'll see the HackG logo again, but this time you'll be taken to the initial setup screen. Select the language of your choice, scroll down to OK, and select it with A. You'll be taken back to the main menu of the NES Classic, but this time you'll see the folders you created on your PC in the main menu, and the games will be alphabetized in these folders. For example, here's Russian Attack, which was not one of the 30 games included with the system originally. And just like with the original 30, you can press the A button to select and launch the new games. By following this installation process, you can put nearly 800 games on the internal storage of the NES Classic. But what if you'd rather come along instead and flip the script and put all of the NES games on it? Well, they can't go to the internal storage, but they can go on USB. Check this out. You'll need to use what's called an OTG or on-the-go adapter for this to work. It lets you plug in both a USB-A and a micro USB into the same micro USB port on the back of the NES Classic. I have this link for you in the description if you need one. Remember how previously we copied over four games? This time we're just going to copy over all of them by selecting them all with the keyboard and then dragging and dropping the entire NES library over to the left window pane. Be aware that even with a no intro ROM set like this, the NES Classic does not have specific mappers that some games will need. In those instances, you can simply choose to skip the installation of those ROMs. In real time, staging these ROMs for transfer to the NES Classic takes a few minutes. Just like before, when transferring ROMs to the internal storage of the NES Classic, you'll want to do the same thing with the USB drive and set up a folder structure. Just like with internally stored games, click on the Structure button and select the drop-down listing for Custom Use Folders Manager. You shouldn't have to do this a second time like you did before, though. Just like before, your best bet is to split the games by first letter. Navigate back over to the right and click on the button that says Split Games by First Letter. Just like with internally stored ROMs, you'll see that everything has been split into alphabetized folders, including a folder with a pound sign on it to represent games that start with numbers or other special characters. Once you're satisfied with the folder structure, come down to OK and click to close the folders manager. This time, however, come down to the listing for Export to USB and click on it. This is super important, so make sure you slow your roll for just a minute. You want to make sure that you have the correct target drive selected and that it's your USB drive. In this case, it's Drive G, name subscribe, so you won't forget to subscribe to the channel while you're here. Once you know you have the correct drive selected and it's your USB drive, click OK. Then just hurry up and wait for a few minutes while everything gets transferred to your USB drive. When it's done, you'll see a list of newly created folders that have been populated on your USB drive. This is an expected behavior. It also creates a new folder for safe states. At this point, you're done with your PC. You can close out any open windows on your computer and remove the USB stick from your PC. Time to put that OTG adapter to use. First step, Plug in the USB storage device into the female USB-A port on the OTG adapter. Next, plug the male end of the micro USB cable into the back of the NES Classic. Then plug the female end of the adapter into the male end of the USB power cable. Power on your NES Classic and you'll see the HackG logo just like with the internally stored games. And just like with internally stored games, you'll need to select the language. Pick the language of your choice with the highlight, then scroll down to OK and select it with the A button. You'll find all of your folders and all of your games inside these folders waiting for you. But that's not the only mini console you can learn how to mod. Check out this video shown on the screen and linked in the video description and pinned comment for some more mini modding mania.